everybody. I'm Rob Sumsky from Red Hat, and today I want to give you an update on operators. You've already heard a little bit about this today. You're going to continue hearing it for years to come. Um, I was part of the team at CoreOS that introduced the concept of operators in 2016, and so I'm excited to be here today to tell you about the success we've had and how it's powering the third round of growth for Kubernetes. So when you look at these three rounds of growth, they're kind of uh, roughly mapped to when certain features came out in Kubernetes. Um, and the first round of this was stateless applications. Um, I'm sure many of you are running these on Kubernetes today. And you're using replica sets and deployments to make this happen, scale things out horizontally. Now the second phase is where we are uh, today, where you've got stateful applications. Um, this is roughly mapped to when staple sets were introduced into Kubernetes. And these were really great for running decently simple workloads that needed staple storage. Underneath the hood, you've got the container storage interface and all of the, um, the work there that takes uh, storage and mounts it from pod to pod as it moves from node to node. Now, as a community, we've progressed past that. Um, we're now running these really complex distributed systems on Kubernetes. Um, and this is a, a little bit of a challenge because there aren't the primitives in Kubernetes um, at the application layer. And so you need things like data rebalancing, uh, seamless upgrades, um, smarter auto-scaling. Uh, and this is where we are today. I want to talk about how you can fulfill this on Kubernetes. And the answer is an operator. So what an operator is, is a piece of software that has unique operational knowledge embedded into it by the experts. So if you think about everything that is in like a run book or a wiki that you might have, um, maybe you've automated some failover with like a bash script, um, all of that is unique application knowledge that it takes your team to run an application. What you can do is model all of that in software and put it into an operator. Now what an operator does under the hood is using these Kubernetes primitives to make that happen. You've got all the stateless workloads, all your stateful workloads, secret disco or service discovery, secret management, all of this is what you can use uh, in your toolkit to build an operator and ultimately run your distributed system. So the great thing about an operator is that you can do flexible architectures. You can run any distributed system you can run on Kubernetes, and that's anything. Um, and you have this really great flexibility, reinvent all kinds of tiered architectures, whatever you need to do in your application. Now, most importantly, because you're using Kubernetes under the hood, you're not reinventing these core concepts. Um, nobody needs to reinvent service discovery. Nobody needs to reinvent secret handling. It's all done by the community, and we've done it really, really well. Now, of course, running these, um, you don't want to be uh, tied into a bespoke set of tools, so you're just using kubectl at the end of the day. You're looking into pods, you're streaming back logs. Um, it just feels like regular Kubernetes, but you've got this superpower of the operator backing it. And then, once again, because you're using Kubernetes, this application is truly hybrid. You can take this operator and give it to somebody that's running on one Kubernetes provider or another Kubernetes provider, and it's going to work the exact same. Um, so you really get this truly hybrid application that can run anywhere. In uh, KubeCon uh, EU earlier this year, we introduced the operator framework to help all of you make these operators. And it's a set of tools um, to get you started, uh, starting with our operator SDK. And this is a set of um, code generation and best practices around communicating with the Kubernetes API, how to structure your operator. Because um, at the end of the day, you're building this reconciliation loop that has all this logic built in about your application. Then, of course, you're not going to be running just one of these on a cluster. You're going to have multiple of them. And software updates are important, so you need to manage the lifecycle of your operators, which then manage the lifecycle of all the applications that are running on your cluster. So we have our operator lifecycle manager, which does just that. And then uh, operator metering rounds out the trio, and this is a set of tools to collect operational metrics about your operators as they're running. Um, your applications can expose these metrics up, and we can collect them together so that you can best run your clusters. All this is housed in a vendor-neutral GitHub org, um, the operator framework. We'd love for you to get involved, check out the code, um, and we're going to work on it in the open. The really exciting thing about this is operators have taken off across the industry, as we just heard today, and I'm sure you've seen a number of sessions about it at the conference. Um, and one thing you'll notice here is uh, all these logos represent complex distributed systems. These aren't just single containers that are running on a cluster. Um, they're very complicated uh, because they do really complicated things and they give you really nice uh, application features. And these are both open source communities uh, as well as commercial products and vendors that are building operators to help you run their software on your clusters. Uh, we've got a whole list of these on GitHub if you want to check them out. Um, but the really exciting thing is if you want to take something like the Spark operator and run it on your cluster, 
You're not an expert in Spark. You don't need to know how Spark components discover themselves, for example, when they're upgraded. Um, it just works, and you just get a Spark cluster. So what does this look like for you as an end user? Um, the best part about Kubernetes is it is self-service, and you have access to these really rich command line tools and APIs. Um, so here we're looking at a production namespace. This has two operators installed on it. Um, and if you wanted to use one of these operators, let's say the MongoDB operator, you submit an object uh, that you see on the right. This is a MongoDB replica set. Um, it embodies the best practices from the MongoDB team about how to run one of these. And so you as an end user provide a very high level set of configuration for how you want this deployed, and the operator is gonna make that happen. Now, of course, you're not just running one or two of these on a cluster but you've got a bunch of them. Um, so our operator lifecycle manager helps you take a look at what versions you're running on the cluster, how they need to be upgraded. You can see um, we got a number of namespaces here and a number of operators installed upon them. Um, and this gives you a good idea of what's going on, how you can se secure your cluster over time. So that was a quick update on where we are with operators. We're really excited about uh, the future. So I want to encourage you to get started. We've got a getting started guide on GitHub for using the entire framework um, get started building an operator. And if you need some help, we have an operator SIG that meets monthly. And this is a, a great place for you to uh, gather with the community, solve problems together. Um, it's a really great place to be. And then of course, if you've got time uh, later today, we have a session at 4.30 about operator metering specifically. Um, and unfortunately, our workshop that we're running tomorrow morning is sold out, but we're gonna be doing more of those in the future, so stay tuned. Uh, we're really excited to see what y'all build. Thank you.